Okay, all right, welcome to the first lesson on SketchUp. SketchUp is a very powerful piece of software. You can access it online through your browser. It is free to use to an extent. You can pay for a premium version, but we're just going to be using the free version over these next few lessons, okay? Now, what it is is a piece of computer-aided design. It's called CAD. It's a very important piece of software, very important type of software. It is used by professionals all around the world to do all kinds of things. If you want to be an architect, you're going to use CAD to build your houses and show people what they look like. If you want to be an interior designer, you can use CAD to show your customers, your clients, what the inside of their house might look like. If you want to be a car designer or an aeroplane designer um, or a computer, you know, you'll use CAD. If you want to be a computer game designer, you can be using CAD to create the worlds and environments that your game is set in, okay? So lots of different, and there's, there's loads more professions as well. So it's a very powerful piece of software used for lots of different things. And SketchUp is one of the most popular ones. And not only is it popular because we can use it in school for our students, the professional version is very powerful when people, architects, engineers, etc., they all use this too. So this is a proper real piece of software that the professionals will use. So we're going to have a quick look at how it works today. We've got a list here of things we're going to go through. So I'm going to just be looking down at my notes as I go. And these are the things that we've mentioned in the PowerPoint that we're going to learn. So to start off with, you need to log yourselves in, like I've shown you in the PowerPoint, and get to this screen here. And you select Create New. You get these different options. I want you to select Meters. OK, we're going to be working in Meters, not these other options here. So we're going to select Meters. Now, I was just playing around a minute ago, so it says save changes to the current model. No, for me, you should just go straight in. And then you get this screen here. Right, you get this little lady here, okay? Ignore her, she doesn't really do anything at this stage. She's really just there to help guide your perspective, right? So if you're building a house, you can see how big that house is compared to an average person. You don't wanna make a house that's tiny, you don't wanna make a house that's too big, right? She's just there for a bit of perspective. Um, right, first things, how do you move? Now, this you're going to have to play around with this a little bit because it depends what sort of uh, hardware you are using. Okay, if you're using an iPad, it's going to be different to if you're using a laptop. If you're using a laptop, it's be different to if you're using a PC. Now, what I'm using here is my laptop with my mouse. It's also got a scroll wheel on top. Okay, because I this is how I prefer to work. Now, I know some of you might have a laptop, but you'll be using the sort of D-pad thing here, where you can control it by using your fingers. So the touchpad. So you're going to have to sort of play around a little bit. I'll try and show you two ways. First of all, I'll show you the way I'm using. If you've got a mouse, OK, the scroll wheel lets you zoom in and out. If you hold that scroll wheel down, you get this little icon here, which is called the Orbit tool. And then you can just rotate your screen around like this. OK, if you want to move side to side, hold down shift, hold down orbit, hold down shift. And you get this little hand and you can move it from side to side like this. OK, so there are your three kind of basic ways of moving around, zooming in, zooming out, orbit around, and then basically shuffle one way and then the other. Now, if you're using the touchpad on your laptop, same thing, OK, um, but you'll have to hold down or press O, that gets you your orbit. Okay, similarly, if you don't want to press O, you could just click this little icon down here. Here's the orbit icon. Okay, once you've clicked that, then hold down your left mouse button on the touchpad, and then you can just move it around like this. And also, if you need to, hold down shift, and you can shuffle from side to side. Okay, if you're using an iPad, I have put a link in this PowerPoint to a different piece of software that you can use with a different tutorial for you. Um, that is going to have to be something that you work on yourself by following that tutorial. This tutorial is for people using uh, SketchUp inside a browser on either their PC or their laptop. Okay. Right. So let's start to build something. First thing you need to use is this tool here. You've got all the different tools down here. The first one is the line tool. Very easy. Looks like a pencil and surprise, surprise, it draws a line. So I can move it around here. Now, you see the line is, the line is black, then it goes green, and then it goes red. 
If it's red, it says it's on the red axis. I mean, it's running parallel to that red line. It's in, you know, it's, it's running straight next to that line. If it goes green, it means the same thing. It's running parallel to that green line. Now, I know it doesn't look like it here. It looks like they're going in different directions, okay? But trust me, it's just a trick of the perspective that he's actually lined up. So let's draw a shape, okay? So I'm going to follow the red axis there. Once I've clicked, I get this little green dot, and then the pencil can go in different directions. So I might go like that, might go like that, might go like that, might go like that. Okay, so now I've got myself a little shape. Once you connect the dots, it changes color in the middle. Okay, and I've actually just drawn the shape there. Right. So play around with that. Okay. So have a little play with the line tool. Just see what you can build. The best way to learn all these bits of software really just to go a little bit crazy and just have a play around to see what can be done. Okay. Um, so there you go. Look. I've just created this bit of a crazy shape in playing around with the line tool. I can go on forever here just playing this and it creates some quite interesting shapes if you just sort of click it around randomly. Right, that's the first thing I want to show you. Okay, you've got the, the line tool and the orbit tool. Now I need to show the arrays tool, which is this thing up here that's like an eraser. Click on it and then you can click on all the lines you've just made. Click on one line at a time and it will delete that work that you have done. There is another way to get rid of lines. If you've got the normal mouse cursor, you can just click on it and then press delete on the keyboard. Okay, that's another way of doing it too. Um, probably the eraser function is the easiest function. Right, there you go, so let's start fresh. Got my line tool there. Next tool on the list I need to show you is, we're gonna use the rectangle. So you've got your drawer there. If you go down one, it says rectangle. Click on it, get your different options. I'm going to go for the basic rectangle here. And surprise, surprise, it draws you a rectangle. Nice and easy. Okay, so there's my rectangle. This is going to be the floor of my house. This is the floor space. So what I need to do now, and you can see my house is looking pretty flat. I need to bring that up. Now, there's a very easy way of doing it using this tool here called the push-pull tool. I select this, I bring it over, I put it over the surface I want to use. You can see it changes color. I click my mouse button, I drag up, and just like that, it's starting to build my house. So this is my lady, okay? I want my house to probably be, well, I'll just do it here. It can be a one-story building, right? So there we go, I can rotate around and look at it. This is the shape. I have now got. If I want to extend it out a bit, I can extend it out this way. Maybe I should do that. Make it a bit more square. Okay, so have a, have a go playing around with that. Well, guys, you can stop and start this video whenever you like. Yeah, that's what I do when I'm learning new pieces of software. I'm watching a tutorial video. I'll watch a few seconds, a few minutes, stop it, pause it, go to the software, try it myself, come back, watch it again. Okay, you, know, you can obviously go backwards and forwards in this video as much as you like. So there's my basic house shape. Now I want to build a roof for my house. I want to build a sloped roof. So I'm going to line myself up just like this so I can see the flat side of the building. And I'm going to go back to my line tool. Okay, you can see when I hit an edge, I get that green dot. I want to hit, yeah, there we go. Also, if I come into the middle, you see I get this sort of gray dot in the middle. That tells me that I'm in the middle of that line, and that's where I want to be for this roof, the midpoint. So I'm going to click on this, then I'm going to go up. Now, it doesn't really matter how far you go, not at this point anyway. So I'm going to go, oh, big one. What have I done there? As you can see, very easy, to make a mistake. Let's click on the midpoint again and try and go up. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. So just be careful, get your perspective right, move, rotate your line around, make sure you've got the line going where you want it to go. Then I'm gonna select one edge. So you can see I've made that triangle there, just half my roof. And I wanna go from there back down to there. And I've made that roof shape. Right, next thing I need to do obviously is move it and push it all the way back to the to fill the roof of my house. 
Before I can do that, let me show you what happens. If I click on the push function, select that, drag it back. Okay, and you can drag it all the way back to get that green dot that says endpoint. If I do that, it only does one half. So I don't want to do that because I want my I want to do the whole roof at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get my razor tool and I'm going to delete that middle line that I drew. Now I needed that middle line to start off with to help me make sure I was in the center, but now it's done that, I can remove it, no problem. I'm then going to click on my push tool. I'm going to drag that back since I get to the green endpoint and then I'm going to let go. And there you can see I have now got the roof on my house. Sometimes, I get the eraser tool, if you've done it and, for example, you are missing uh, a side here, you can just fill it in with the pencil again. If you sort of select these points here with the pencil, it, kind of, it will fill that back in and draw another line in, okay? Um, that's quite easy to do sometimes. You pull it back and it doesn't quite fill that end point in. Right, so I think that is where we all are. Right, I'm going to leave you one last thing to look at before we finish today's lesson. And that is going to be this function over here called materials. Okay. And now materials gives you a range of different colors that you can use. Oh, one thing I maybe didn't show you actually was when you're playing around with different tools, if you want to get rid of a tool and change, pressing spacebar removes that gets rid of that. So if I've got line tool, press space bar, it's gone. If I've got the push pull tool, press space bar, it's gone. Okay, that's quite useful because sometimes you can be trying to do something else and then you're still using the wrong tool. Right, so now I've got uh, my materials. I can click on different colors here. Say I want a nice gray color for my roof. And it's just like Microsoft Paint. You just color in the roof. Make sure you get all the edges and Say I want a different color for the bottom of the house. Maybe I'll go for that gray there. Nice, boring gray house, okay? There are different colors you can use, obviously. So there we go. And that, ladies and gents, is my house. So that's your task for this lesson, okay? Remember, if you're submitting this to your teacher, you need to screenshot this and load it onto um, Google Classroom. Okay, right. Hope that all makes sense. I say rewatch the video and have a play around with it. Okay, remember you can't go wrong with this. The best way to learn this piece of software is just to play around with it. Okay, but that's your task for today's lesson to create a house that looks something like this. Okay, good luck. <laughs>